Let's get started on today's notes over an introduction to linear functions. And today we're going to be identifying linear functions. So let's first identify a linear function by its graph. So I've got this little word problem to introduce this. Most cross-country runners set a pace when going out for a jog. If a runner sets a pace for a seven minute mile, the equation y equals seven x would represent the number of minutes it takes to jog x miles. The graph shows the solutions. It represents a function first and foremost because there is exactly one output, which is your y value, for each input, that's your x value. It represents a linear function because it is a straight line. So let's move on. The directions say identify whether each graph represents a function. If so, determine if it's a linear function. So number one, it is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Is it a linear function? Yes, because it is a straight line. So let's write linear function. On number two, is that a linear function? It sure is, it's a straight line and it's a function, so it is a linear function. On number three, first and foremost, is it a function? Yes, it is, it passes the vertical line test, so it is a function, but is it linear? No, it has to be a straight line, a perfectly straight line, and this is curved. So this is a non-linear function. Let's move on to number four. Number four, is it a function? No, it's not even a function because it is a vertical line. So you have to be careful with problems that look like this because even though it's a straight line, it's not a linear function because it's not even a function. So let's write not a function on here. And then moving on to number five, it is a function because it passes the vertical line test, but is it linear? Well, sure, it's got a straight line here and a straight line here, but the entire thing needs to be a perfectly straight line. So this is not a linear function. And we'll put nonlinear function on here. And let's move on to the next section of our notes. In the next section, in this section, we're going to identify a linear function by its ordered pairs. So in a linear function, a constant change in x corresponds to a constant change in y. What does that mean, constant? The same. So determine if the following are linear or nonlinear. So on number six, let's look at the change in each of these y values. So we're gonna start here on the right side of our table. We're gonna look at the change from negative five to negative three. What did we do to get from negative five to negative three? We added two, and then negative three to negative one, also added two. We can see that we added two here, we've added two here, we've added two here, okay. Now, let's look at our x values on the left side of our table. What happened, what did we do to get from negative four to negative three? We added one. What about negative three to negative two? Also added one. We added one here. We added one here. And we added one here. So does this show a constant change in X corresponding to a constant change in Y? We added two between all of these values and our, the, y, the Y column. And we added one in all between all of these values in the left column. That shows you that a constant change in X is corresponding to a constant change in Y. So let's write linear function up here and I'm actually gonna erase all these arrows and I'm gonna rewrite it. That is in fact linear. Let's move on to number seven. Number seven, our change in our Y values. What's happening? To get from negative five to negative three, we're adding two. Negative three to zero, we're adding three. We're adding four here. What's happening here? We're adding five, we're adding six. So we already don't show a constant change in Y, but looking over here at our X values, I'm adding two every time. So I have a constant change in X, but I don't have a constant change in Y because of these change in values over here, the differences between the, the values. 
So the con I don't have a constant change in x corresponding to a constant change in y, which means this is nonlinear. But what if your ordered pairs are listed out like this? So it's really the same information, just it looks a little different. So now I'm still wanting to find the difference between my x values. I know in an ordered pair, it's x comma y. So let's look at our changes when we go from one x value to the next. What's happening here to get from three to four? I'm adding one. Four to five, adding one. Five to six, adding one. Six to seven, adding one. Now let's look at the change in our x or our y values. What happened to get from two to zero? We subtracted two. Zero to negative two, subtracted two. Negative two to negative four, subtracted two. And then negative four to negative six, we subtracted two. So does a constant change in x correspond to a constant change in y? Yes, therefore this is linear. Let's move on to the next section. Identify a linear function by its equation. So a function is linear if it is described by a linear equation. A linear equation is any equation that can be written in standard form. So standard form looks like this. AX plus BY equals C, where A B and C are real numbers, and A and B are both not zero. So when an equation is written in standard form, X and Y are not multiplied together, so you'll never see an X right next to a Y, okay? X and Y both have exponents of one. So if you see something like X squared, nonlinear. X and Y do not appear in exponents, denominators, or radical signs. I'm actually going to erase these right here because I don't want you to think that they're examples. These are not examples of linear functions. So let's move on to the bottom section. Determine if each of the following equations represents a linear or nonlinear equation. In number 9, 5x plus 4y equals 7. It's in standard form. It's linear. Let's look at number 10. y equals 2x squared minus 3. Well, this x squared, remember, x cannot be raised to any power other than 1. So if you just see an x all by itself, it's assumed to have an exponent of a 1, but you won't ever see it like that. Okay, but x squared, obviously, this is nonlinear. Let's move on to number 11. y minus 2 equals negative 5x. Well, x and y are not multiplied together. They both have exponents of 1. Do either of the variables appear in exponents, denominators, or radical signs? They do not. Therefore, this is linear. I could also um, kind of shift some things around and put it in standard form, but we're not going to do that quite yet. Let's look at number 12. Is this linear or nonlinear? It's nonlinear. Why? You have an x value that appears as a denominator. So... This is nonlinear. Looking at number 13, linear or nonlinear? X and Y aren't multiplied together. They both have exponents of, of one. They don't appear. The variables do not appear in exponents, denominators, or radical signs. And remember, radical sign is like that right there, right? Like the square root sign. That is linear. And number 14, why is this nonlinear? It's obviously nonlinear. Why is it nonlinear? X and Y are multiplied together. So let's go on to the last section of today's notes, and we're just going to be graphing a linear function from two points. You only need two points to form a line, and so we're just going to create a little table of values with some input outputs producing our ordered pairs, and we're going to graph each line. So you only need two points to graph a linear function given the following linear equations. Generate two sets of ordered pairs, then graph to form a straight line. So here we have this equation right here, number 15, y equals negative 2x plus 1. And we're going to input each of these values in for x, and we're going to get an output value of y. But we're going to write those values as ordered pairs with our input values as our x values and our output values as our y values. 
So in the first one, we're just going to rewrite this like this, negative 2 times x plus 1. So the first thing I did was I rewrote the entire equation and I replaced the variable with parentheses. I'm going to put what I'm replacing the variable with inside the parentheses, which is negative 2. And now we're just going to simplify this using our order of operations. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Positive 4 plus 1 is 5. Therefore, when I entered negative 2 for x, I got positive 5 for y. Now, in the next one, I'm going to plug in 0 for x. So I rewrite everything the same. I replace the variable with parentheses inside the parentheses. I put what I'm replacing x with. And then let's solve. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. When I enter 0 for x, I get 1 for y. And now let's graph this. When I graph the point negative 2, 5, from my origin, I go left 2 and then up 5. And then when I graph the point 0, 1, I don't go left or right, I just go up 1. It's on my y-axis. And then I'm just going to connect those two points to make a line. And you only need two points to make a line. So that's all we did. You could get as many points as you wanted and put them in a table and graph those points and then connect the dots. But we're just picking two points for today. Let's look at number 16. This is actually a linear equation in standard form, but we're going to do the same thing. Okay, so in the first one, here's our equation. We're going to plug in negative 1 for x. So 3 times negative 1 minus y equals 1. So what I'm actually going to do and is rewrite this. I plugged in negative 1 for x. I need to figure out what y is. It was a little easier in number 15 when y was already solved for. In this one, I actually need to undo this equation and solve for y. So what do I do first? 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 minus y equals 1. What do I do now? I'm going to add 3 to both sides. That cancels out the left side. I've got it on the right. And I get negative y equals 4. If nothing is in front of that variable, what can you put there? A 1. So really, we need to divide both sides by negative 1. And you should get y equals negative 1. 4. When I plug in negative 1 for x, I get negative 4 for y. So now let's plug in 1 for x. So instead of 3 times x, 3 times parentheses, minus y equals 1. And then I put 1 inside the parentheses because that's what I'm replacing y with, or x with. I'm replacing x with 1 and I'm figuring out what is y when x is 1. So 3 times 1 minus y equals 1. And we're going to do the same thing, except 3 times 1 is positive 3 minus y equals 1. Now what do I do? Same steps, except I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Negative y equals negative 2. And I know now I need to divide both sides by negative 1, and I get y equals positive 2. If I did that too fast, you can pause the video, go back and re-watch re it. Um, just think about it a little bit. That's the beauty of a video. When I plug in 1 for x, I get 2 for y. And now let's graph these points. Negative 1, negative 4 is down here in quadrant 3. Positive 1, positive 2, that's up here in quadrant 1. And then I'm just going to graph or connect those two points to form a line. And that concludes your notes for today over an introduction to linear functions. I hope it was helpful.